Carlo from MA Lighting. Carlo, yeah. uh, what have we got in front of us here? What is this? Okay, so this is the uh, the command wing that can be used in uh, with on PC uh, with Windows or with Mac OS. Uh, I'll quickly go through the executor, the, the, the hardware of the console. We've got the executor section here, which is divided into four different layers. You've got your executor buttons, and then you've got your executor buttons with the faders, and then you've got executor buttons with the knobs here and over here. And then uh, we know that in, in MA2, when you store something here. Uh, We know in MA2 we can expand our executor section horizontally, but in MA3 what we've done is you can also expand your uh, executor section vertically. So which means, uh, yeah, which means you can use uh, the faders as well as the knobs, everything for just one executor. Uh, coming from the MA2 uh, perspective, what you can do is, let's say you're a MA2 guy and we have, you want to use the, the executor button and the fader and the top two buttons, then you can also do that by doing this. And the encoders are completely customizable and the faders as well. You can assign a function for fader press, fader release, fader down, fader up. Uh, and the same thing with the knobs, you can assign a function for encoder left or encoder right. Uh, I can assign encoder left as go minus and encoder right as go plus. So this will go back to my cues and this will go forward in my cues. And in the programming section, what uh, the interesting thing what we have here is the dual encoders. The idea behind the dual encoders is to have uh, is to have them uh, customizable. Of course, when you're in demo, uh, all you have is just one encoder, and everything else is wasted. But what uh, the idea is that the user can assign uh, all the ad all, all the different attributes of the attribute layer on these encoders. So, for example, the idea is that you can have your demo here and pan and tilt here and color and so on and so forth. Or if you don't want something, if you, if you don't want to use one, uh, your control from your attribute section, you can even remove it. There you go. Or you can move it along. Yeah, that's the programming section. Fantastic. Where's the clear button? Have you left me with the console? I couldn't find clear. Yes, yeah. Ah, yeah. of course. I'm totally moved. Yeah, so the clear, escape, uh, oops, and the full button are all in one section here. Which okay. is the last. So that's easily accessible. Uh, you have some new commands called uh, like grid and step. Uh, I'll go through that in just a minute. Uh, and the software, what you have is uh, something new is the is storing the presets. For example, if I select my fixtures and oops, my light is on, if I say full, if I go to position, I can use this. And when you want to show your preset, all you do is long press for one second. Oops. There you go. And the cool GUI here is when you click and swipe your finger, you have uh, your swipey options. So if you want to label it, then you can give a name and you can do your swipey and then say apply. Um, the cool thing is, the cool thing that I like about MA3 is the selection window. So for example, if I select my picture 101 through 106, and uh, or maybe let's take the for us, say so picture one through six, no, one through five, and uh, fixture twelve through sixteen. So in MA two or in MA one, we have this one-dimensional selection window. But in MA three, what you can do is you can switch the selection into dimensional mode. So what that does is, if I select picture one through six. through 5, my next pictures are 12 to 16, so what I can do is I can say 12 through 16 and I can use this new command called grid and I say 1 space 2 and I say please, wow, that's two that's cool. yeah. now when you assign uh, an effect, what it does is it, it, it will go in uh, from left to right in, in this selection order, so how do we do effects, if you go to demo, so let's set the first value as zero. And if you want to go to the next step, we, we press the up arrow button. At the moment, I know we are in step one. And if we press up arrow, now we are in step two. Let's give a value of 100. So that's the regular effect with face zero or with uh, with one face. Now if I change the face from zero to zero to 360. Okay, wow. Yeah. And if you've got transition, which is the amount of time 
uh, that it takes to move from step one to step two or from step two to step one. You can see this transition, uh, you can see these effects in the new phaser window. You go to other, you have some phaser window, and then you can see all your fixes going from to zero to 100. Fantastic. So that sort of does away with the whole wings, blocks and groups because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. free selection now. Okay. Yeah. Now if I change the transition to zero, so that's transition, the amount of time it takes transitioning from step, uh, one step to another one. And let's put that back to zero and step one as well. following our uh, selection order. Cool. So, um, also another cool thing that you might have already seen from the videos uh, did by Rene is, uh, is a new 3D that is implemented in the OnPC software. Uh, the cool thing about 3D is not just having it inside the software, but uh, if you have multi-instance fixtures, like uh, what I have here is the alien fix, because they're full, and I go to position, and let's minimize our fixture sheet. And also, when you uh, you don't have the old scrollers anymore, yeah, you have it, but it's it's much smaller. But the idea is to use your two uh, two fingers to scroll through uh, your fixture sheet or or any other sheet for that matter. I have got my alien fix here. So earlier we had uh, the previous and next buttons, which uh, if you use, you go from fixer 201 to 202, 203, and so on and so forth. But now what I have is the up and down buttons. So if I go to position, now you can see that I don't have uh, my tilt for, for my head. So if I come down, you can see I'm shifting to my next instance. If I position them down, and if I go further down, which is accessing my uh, multi-instance pixels. So this was, uh, this was not present in MA2 uh, when you're using uh, pictures like um, multi-instance pictures like Klepaki Elida or a Alien Pix, you, you just used to see the see the beam or, or, or a wash on the floor, but now you can see the individual pixels. And this is uh, made possible through the new file format that we're using, which is GDTF. Uh, GDTF is not uh, an MA3 thing, it's a file format that uh, it's, it's royalty free, any, any uh, manufacturer out there can use it and, and can implement it in, 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 their, uh, in their products. Uh, the GDTF is is nothing but it's it's a zip file of uh, your XML file, which which has all your uh, DMX data, and it has a uh, .3ds file, which which is uh, the the 3D uh, information, in, in which you can actually you, you can actually or the manufacturer can say, okay, this is where in, in the geometric dimension, this is where my each pixel is, and so on and so forth. So this is made possible through the new GDTF file format, and the third. Uh, file format that is inside GDTF is, is the PNG which is of course used for uh, images. So GDTF is nothing but human readable um, file uh, or, or a zip file which has these three different file formats. So, so yeah. inside of the new files all the modes for the fixtures are also kept aren't they? So rather than having five different fixtures exactly. files it's all in one file now. Yeah, yeah. now okay, it's, cool. it's just one file with, 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 with all the DMX modes inside it rather than having uh, Different files for different uh, different different modes of the picture. Cool. So I have to say, yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome.